my name is Alicia Shapiro with AINews.com and welcome to another episode of our Driving Tomorrow, Conversations with Industry Leaders, where we explore the latest developments and newest innovations in the world of artificial intelligence. Today, I'm excited to speak with Ilias Anwar, the co-founder of Tapped AI, the Creator Week NYC, and co-founder of TCC Entertainment. As a driving force behind innovation in the music industry, Ilias has dis dedicated his career to supporting musicians and fostering creativity. Through Tapped AI, he's helping artists revolutionize the way they book performances and connect with audiences using cutting-edge AI technology. In addition, Ilias's passion for empowering creators is evident through his work as an author and mentor to music tech entrepreneurs. In today's interview, we'll explore how AI is transforming the live music landscape, the challenges and opportunities this technology brings, and Ilias's role in shaping the future of the music industry. So thank you for joining us today, Ilias. Yeah, thank you, Alicia. I'm so excited to be on here. Oh, awesome. Absolutely. All right, let's get started. As co-founder of Tapped AI, you're leveraging AI to transform how musicians book performances and understand their audience. What inspired you to combine AI with the live music industry and how do you see it changing the landscape for artists? Uh, so honestly, I never saw myself in the AI industry. Uh, I accidentally stumbled upon of it or stumbled upon it because of my co-founder, Johannes, um, oh. who's obviously more of the technical co-founder. I came from the entertainment industry. He was in tech and scaled a music tech startups beforehand. Um, and we realized that there are obviously a lot of problems in the music industry. I was working in events. I was working with musicians. And we saw that the live event space specifically needed a lot of change. And when I had actually met up on a podcast with Johannes about two years ago, we had actually stayed on after that podcast and had a call for about two hours about all the different problems that the industry is facing and how tech could save it or solve that. I gave him those ideas by hoping that he, somebody who has the ability to build those things or is working on a tech startup, would be able to do that on his own. I didn't think two weeks later he would call me and say, hey, do you want to work on those ideas with me? <laughs> and so the way that I think AI will be shaping uh, the future of entertainment is obviously there's a lot of resistance when you're replacing the art. I think AI should be replacing the business or helping with the business and maybe only helping with the inspiration of the art but never fully replacing the art. That's so important. And Tapped AI helps artists create world tours using data and machine learning. Can you share a success story where this technology made a significant impact on an artist's career or tour? Sure. So we are working with some mid-sized artists, but for the people that are listening, I want to tell a story that'll hit a little bit more closer to home or be more relatable. And so yeah. obviously, yes, we do have the ability for you to reach out to venues and do a multi-city mini tour. We're not saying that you're going to get on the app and become the next Taylor Swift. That's a dream that you're selling yourself if you come onto this platform. But realistically, if you do have a fan base and you have people that listen to your music all over the world, it's very realistic for you to do a multi-city tour at 200 capacity venues. That's extremely realistic. But a lot of people don't have the ability to do that because of the time, money, or the connections. And so one example was a 17 year old kid that's out here in New York that was making music from his basement. He does not go to an engineer. He uses uh, a software like BandLab and he basically records his homies through a video like conferencing platform like this called Discord. So it's like for the younger generation to make music and game together. And he went ahead and used the platform and he was able to get a booking out here in New York City at one of the venues that we've been doing a lot of events at called Night Horse, and they're out in Greenpoint in Brooklyn. And he knew nobody. He did not have a booking agent, nor does he have the money to hire one, nor does he have the connections to even get venues on his own. He hopped on the platform. There's thousands of venues on the app. The software will go ahead and dictate which venues are, are fit for you. And then through there, obviously, we help facilitate the conversation as well. Because when building the software, not only did we realize that people don't have the connections, but they also don't know how to facilitate the conversation when speaking with a venue owner or showing their the work that they're supposed to. And that fits in earlier with how I was saying where I think AI will fit is mm -hmm. they're not necessarily creating a hologram of the artist and coming in and mm -hmm. performing on stage. It's helping facilitate the conversation. It's helping identify what venue would be right for you and helping find other performers that are similar to you in your artist's career trajectory and then doing the show with them. 
that's so incredible. That's amazing that you're doing that for them. Yeah. Um, and I think it's cool because it's realistic, right? It's like yeah. anybody can hop on. You have no connections. You can get booked in your city. It's not hard. It's obviously going to take a little bit of outreach through the app, but the platform is there for you to be able to do that your own. That's incredible. So what are some of the big challenges you faced while integrating AI into the live music industry and how have you overcome them? One thing that's been really challenging is obviously we've built our community and our name off the idea of helping the independent artists, off of helping the smaller guys. And when you hear the name Tapped AI, independent artists almost are very careful when wanting to use our platform or working with us, because when you hear the name Tapped AI, you think it's going to replace your voice or it's going to be some sort of like weird, live interactive or hologram that's going to replace your live performances. And so that hasn't reflected with our company because from the very beginning, I said, I believe AI should be replacing the business and not the art. When you hear the name Tapped AI, because of what's going on in music right now, everybody's focused on song generation. Let's replace your voice. Let's make you sound like Angelina Jolie. Let's make you sound like Brad Pitt. Let's make you sound like Drake. Let's make you sound like all these different people. It's I don't even get to be myself anymore. And yeah. I think because we didn't go that route and we're a little bit early, I feel like the music industry and the entertainment industry will start to realize that they can utilize AI and they don't have to be so resistant to it but it's not going to be used in the way that's popular right now. It's going to be used in ways, and the people who are furthering their career are the ones who are using it for business, like I said, facilitating conversation, creating pitch decks um, or electronic press kits um, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But right now, when you think of AI and music, you only see the two biggest headlines, which is replacing your voice. And this X company got sued for hundreds of millions of dollars for stealing this artist's voice. And I think that's the biggest thing is that obviously I know that we're early and I know that our product works. I've seen it. There's a reason why we haven't spent any marketing money for 90% of this company's existence is because we wanted to build a product and see that people actually liked it and came back on their own and that the product worked without having to pump money towards anything. And then once you find that product market fit, then you start to pump money. So I think to the TLDR, the two biggest challenges have been the name and then obviously just being a little bit early and, and trying to get people to understand that we're not bad, I promise. <laughs> yeah. When looking ahead, how do you see Tapped AI continuing to evolve? What innovations do you think will further empower artists and performers in the future? So one thing I believe in is collaboration. In music, it's all through word of mouth. You could build the best product um, and people will use it. But if you want it to be like a staple, if you want it to be one of the biggest, I think there has to be that word of mouth. I've seen it so many times whenever I use a product, the software, I work with a company, I trust it more through somebody that I know rather than seeing it through a Facebook ad. Uh, and so I think our next biggest exciting feature is obviously the opportunities. So now we're going to be using AI to go through and find all these different opportunities that these venues have because we have the data from these venues and whenever they're doing future shows. And now we'll be having venues posting job postings for performers to come and oh, apply wow. to perform. So now you're getting higher quality talent and these performers don't have to just know somebody who knows somebody to get booked there wow. or have to be in a something above extraordinary to even get booked at some of these venues. If you have good talent, you can now apply to a venue and your electronic press kit will be there for them to view. And you can now share the stage with your favorite artists or even just get your name out there like you couldn't before. Like, for example, if you look at Google, right? Now, a lot of the times they will hire through their own network or word of mouth. But if there is good talent, they put job postings on Google and Indeed and all these other platforms, and they can hire good talent because there's a platform where they can find stuff like that. But when right. it comes to venues, and I've thrown hundreds of events, when it comes to venues, we're in 2024 and it is such a massive trillion dollar plus industry. And we still don't have a place where performers can just apply to a venue or to a show. And if they're good enough and it makes sense and it's cohesive and it fits with the artists, the main artist genre, why would you not have them perform to help yeah. sell more tickets? I, I believe that venues should not ever have less than 50% capacity. If you are doing the right things like putting out postings or opportunities, which is the feature we're going to call it on our platform, you can get other people to perform, right? If one artist isn't selling out the whole show, well then get two, three other artists that are similar within that niche or 
find somebody that artist knows that can also hop on the bill and help sell more ticket sales. Now, I'm completely aware it's not this easy of a solution to build that platform. It's going to take a lot of time and it's years down the line, but the idea is there. And I also believe, like I said, collaboration is key. So we have a plus one feature where anytime you apply to an opportunity or anytime you reach out to a venue, you can now reach out to them with a plus one. So not only does it pitch your artist profile, but it also pitches their artist profile as well, making it more likely for them to book you. So if a venue gets a ping from me, let's say I'm an artist and I only sell 100 tickets, but my venue has 300 person capacity, then I'm going to go get one of my other friends who has 200 person capacity average ticket sale, and then he can get tagged on with me. And now it's less of a risk if they were to bring me on to perform at that venue. That's incredible. I just love what you're doing for this because while I'm not a performer, I just think that is an incredible need and you're doing amazing work. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you've worked with over a hundred artists with their social media strategies and you mentor music tech entrepreneurs through tapped AI. What's the most important piece or of advice you'd give to emerging creators looking to make their mark in the industry? I actually did a webinar last night. I was invited on to actually speak about uh, personal branding. And this was with Natalie Neptune and a company they just started called Gen ZT. And I really think uh, your digital footprint is really important and building a personal brand is really important. For the past six, seven years, I've been quietly building my companies and I've been working behind the scenes and I've been working with all these super high profile clientele, but I never attached it to my personal brand. And I feel like the biggest issue with myself and not really doing the right thing by telling my story early on was that I wasn't really able to capitalize off of it and really build that uh, personal brand to just allow me to be into other rooms. For example, the past seven months is when I actually started developing my personal brand and telling my story and being more public with it. Beforehand, I wouldn't say anything. I'd, I'd work with an artist and it would just be front facing from the company perspective and you wouldn't know that I was involved with it at all. That got way more outreach. Let's say I did a marketing campaign with an artist and let's say a million people saw it. If I yeah. then go on my personal brand and to post about it on Twitter or other socials, I could only get a thousand or 2000 views on that post. But by me communicating that and letting people know, I could get five to 10 clients off that alone. But if wow. I do that marketing campaign, I would only get another client from that if that person referred me. But by mm -hmm. me going out of my own way and telling that to somebody, that is now allowing me to take that next level to be able to get a clientele on my own. And so I think that's the biggest thing for people that are watching. I'm not no expert by any means. I'm figuring it out as I go as well. I'm going in uncharted waters. But what I have realized for myself was that things started working out better for me when I started being public with my story. And so for the people who are watching now, it's easy for them to go public with their story. Go post on yeah. Twitter, go post on LinkedIn, go post on Instagram, go post on TikTok. And the beauty of it is, you don't need a million views. I have a video on YouTube right now. Sure, one may have a couple thousand, but there's another that I've done a se seminar or webinar. It has seven views. doesn't huh. matter. I still get to go to hotels and get paid hotels for free for seminars when I get flown out. I still get dinners for free when we get invited to events to speak. I speak in, in front of multiple different crowds at conferences, events, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't have a million views on everything that I do. I don't have 10 million yeah. views. You don't need to be famous to have a personal brand. To have a personal brand, you just have to be yourself. And that's the beauty of it. Because if it's in the right niche, you can still get the benefits. I love that. That's great advice. And you founded Creator Week NYC to foster creativity and growth for performers and musicians. Can you tell us a little bit more about that event and what inspired you to launch a unique platform for creatives? Sure. So in the tech community, there was a lot of talk about New York City and how there needed to be a South by Southwest for New York, which is basically yeah. a flagship week where art, film, music, fashion, tech, entertainment in general can just all come together. Now, in the entertainment industry, so many careers are built off of South by Southwest. Record label execs fly in, tech founders fly in, all these different people from all these different industries come in and artists get signed and then they go off to become the next Billie Eilish or the next Post Malone. And New York City itself is that 24-7, but I believe mm -hmm. there is no dedicated week to that. Now, obviously, you might say there's a Tribeca Film Festival or there is a New York Fashion Week or there's a New York Tech Week, but those are all standalone on themselves. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, there has never been anything that is completely combined together. And if there is, then I'm just ignorant and I'm not aware of it. 
But mm -hmm. there was a talking point in the tech community. And I saw a lot of people who had a lot of funding and money from Google and all these big companies. And they're like, yeah, we could do this and we can sponsor it. And I don't believe the solution is money. I looked at this and I thought myself, I was like, I know I just moved here two months ago. Who do I think I am to think that I can just do this myself? But I, it really annoyed me. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't think the solution should be some big Google exec goes and throws hundreds of thousands of dollars for one event to make this happen. I believe the the future creators are not people who are sitting on, at the top of their corporate office. I, I know it's the kid in Brooklyn who's painting and he's struggling to make his ends meet. And he thinks he's the next Basquiat. I think it's the DJ who's running around working a nine to five, but then he's also, you know, running around doing all these independent venues and, and throwing events. And I think it's the girl who is a fashion designer that has a small little pop-up shop every single week. I think that is what creator week is. It's not something you can throw money at. I know those people who are <clears throat> running around in the niche scene, like involved in the fashion space, in the tech space, in the music space, in the film space. So I didn't think that I could do it all by myself. I'm very big on collaboration. I know other people are more involved in those things than me, even as interested as I, I am in it. I know that I am not the one to speak for fashion, right? I know I'm not the one to speak for these different things. So what I did was I got eight of my friends who are really involved in all those communities in New York. And I dedicated a day for art, dedicated a day for film, dedicated a day for oh, comedy, awesome. dedicated a day for music. And in two weeks, we had it happen. Zero dollar budget, convinced all the venues to do it for free, convinced all the event organizers to do it on their own. And obviously, I took none of their ticket profits either. The, I believe the business model for Creator Week should be, I have my two main events for the week. And if everybody else is throwing their events and they get to keep all their money, then they're going to be really happy to be involved with it. And it's just yes. going to make my two more events more successful as well. Um, and I'm not really looking to make money from this. Like Creator Week is something that I just want to have my hand in to be really involved with all the different communities. Because now I know all the rising filmmakers. I know a lot of the rising fashion designers in New York. Whereas before Creator Week, I only had a little bit of an understanding of it. So for me, it's really to keep my finger on the pulse and just a way to make sure that I'm doing my part to make sure big corporate money doesn't get involved in making something like this. Now, maybe they might, right? End of the year, they might drop something and maybe 500,000 people will sign up for theirs. But at least I know yes. I did my part and we have our own little circle over here. So if everybody wants to attend over there, that's cool. But we're here. Yeah, no, that's great. I love that the focus is on the creators, whether they're in, like you said, music or art or fashion, it's still about creating and I love that you're putting that first. So yeah. that's amazing. Great job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And before we wrap up, I'd like to shift to a little couple lighter questions so our audience can get to know you a little better. When you do step away from your work, what are some activities or hobbies that you're passionate about? I love this question so much because I think it's actually a problem. I think everything that I'm passionate about, I turn into work. Oh, um, yeah. And so you see, I love fashion, I love art, but now it's, I'm throwing creator week and now I'm throwing art events and fashion events. And tonight we have a fashion after party. To be honest with you, I think it's bad, but I guess that's the beauty of it, right? Is that like yeah. everything that I love to do, I've somehow made it involved with my work. Mm -hmm. Two things that I think I do, uh, which is probably super random, that helps me de-stress. I love playing Madden, which is basically uh, the video yeah. game version of NFL. And I like being able to manage my own football team and draft players mm -hmm. and trade players and stuff like that. And that helps me de-stress so much. It's funny yeah. because since I moved to New York, I don't have my whole PC set up. So I haven't really been able to play it. So every time I go back home, I'm, I'm so excited to play because I just love that game so much. Yeah. Um, I grew up playing it my whole life. And then another thing I do as well, I love just watching Family Guy. Like I'll go get some yeah. Chinese food. And I'll turn Family Guy and everybody's so weirded out by the fact that I love Family Guy so much. Oh, no. But it just turns your brain show. off. Yeah. It's like a brain numbing content. And for me, it really just makes me not think about work. And it's something easy to just watch in the background. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you need that to, like you mm -hmm. said, to de-stress and, and unwind from everything. But that's great. Everything that you like, you're turning it into work in a way, because then it's like that old saying, you're never going to work a day in your life if you do what you love. So it works out. 100%. <laughs> that's great. And is there a particular moment or experience in your career that really shaped your passion for supporting musicians and fostering creativity in others? There was one. We there was a there's another one before that, but I'm going to say this one instead. Okay. I threw my first ever like concert in my backyard in college. And 
honestly not what we were expecting. The turnout was like four times more than what we thought. And don't get me wrong, our backyard was like massive. And that day we had, I think, over 10 performers come through and we didn't get the event license like through the city because I'm like 18 oh. years old. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just throwing an event. I know a lot of artists. I'm like, let me just bring them out. I was managing an artist at the time. I was like, my backyard's pretty big. I have a lot of DJ friends and we know how to use equipment. Let's throw a concert in my backyard. Um, we get a knock from the door and the police come before my artist is about to perform. Oh and my everybody else had performed at that time. And I was so scared after that because I thought we were going to get a fine and we were going to get in so much trouble. And obviously everything ended up being fine. But in the moment when you're young, you're thinking it's the end of the world. You're going to get kicked out of school or something. I sat down with an artist and I was so upset. And I was like, I'm never going to throw an event again. And then one of the artists that performed that night, he sat down with me and he said, don't underestimate yourself. And he's don't shoot yourself in the foot just because this didn't go well. He's look at the good from this. He's you were able to bring a couple hundred people in your backyard. This was something that you yeah. just did off the whim. It was something last minute. Then he's, I haven't had an ability to perform within the past year because his music was like declining. And he was wow. saying that venues didn't want to book him anymore. And he said, but you gave me that opportunity. And he's, you're the reason why I'm now going to keep pushing with my music because by having this platform for me to be able to now perform, I know that people like my music and my friends and my relatives and friends came to support me. It's different when you see it, like being an artist and being a musician is so lonely because mm -hmm. when you're first coming up, when you're dropping music, you're not really getting that love and attention that you crave. Yeah. If you, if you want to be a musician, you crave that a little bit. And that's why I think live events are so important because it temporarily itches that scratch that you have when your mom comes to watch you perform or when their friend yeah. comes to watch them perform. And then after they're getting that real life feedback. And so when he told me that it really put it into perspective. And from that point on, we went to throw two, three more house shows. And then we had a contract to work with the venue and those house shows in my backyard would, are, are what really made me realize that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry for a long time. And ever since then, I've just been chasing that feeling. And selfishly, it's a really good feeling when somebody comes up to you and they're like, thank you for doing this. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's amazing. And that's just great that he said that because I can imagine that would be such a huge impact for sure. Yeah. And I'm excited to more do more. We have another one tonight and I just want to, and, and that's the beauty of the software, right? Is that I was able to give that feeling. And I really think this is the, the spark for the tech company to wrap it up because I know you got to go. But I think the reason why I love working on the tech company too, is because when I was creating those moments for people with my media company, there's a window and a ceiling to how many people we can help with that. Mm -hmm. I'm only one person. Even if we build a team, you can only help X amount of people within your city. But with the platform that we have now, if you use it, you can technically use it from anywhere in the world. Yes. And so now you're scaling up that feeling, but to potentially to millions of people. If a million artists wanted me to help with their concerts and events and stuff tomorrow, I couldn't do it through my media company, right? Mm -hmm. But with the tech company, if a million people came on and they wanted to get booked, they could do that through the tech company. That's so great. I love that. Thank you so much, Ilias, for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights, your innovative work in the music industry, and your dedication to empowering creators and musicians through AI has just been truly inspiring. It's been such a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you so much, Alicia. You guys and your team have been so sweet. I look forward to oh. talking to you guys soon. Yes. And to learn more about Tapped AI, you can visit their website, tapped.ai. Keeping you connected to tomorrow. Today, this is Alicia with AINews.com.